اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم الحمد لله رب العالمین و صلی الله علی سیدنا محمد و آله الطاهرین verse number 43 of surah an-nisa يا ايها الذين امنوا لا تقربوا الصلاه وانتم سكارى حتى تعلموا ما تقولون او you have faith do not approach prayer when you are intoxicated not until you know what you are saying ولا جنبا الا عابر سبيل حتى تختصلوا nor enter mosques in the state of ritual impurity except while passing through until you have washed yourselves. وَإِن كُنْتُمْ مَرْضَى أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ أَوْ جَاءَ أَحَدٌ مِّنْكُمْ مِّنَ الْغَائِضِ أَوْ لَمَسْتُمُ النِّسَاءَ فَلَمْ تَجِدُوا مَاءً فَتَيَمَّمُوا سَعِيدًا طَيِّبًا فَمْسَهُوا بِغُجُوهِكُمْ وَأَيْدِيكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَفُوًا غَفُورًا But if you are sick or on a journey, or any of you has come from the toilet, or you have touched women, and you cannot find water, then make your ablution on clean ground and wipe a part of your faces and your hands. Indeed, Allah is all excusing, all forgiving. The beginning part of this verse we discussed last time about La Taqrabu Salat, what is meant by salat is it the actual salat and prayer or it's the pr places of prayer and salat which we discussed last time now la taqrabu salata wa antum sukara sukara is the plural, plural of sakran and sakran is someone who's intoxicated who has lost his mind by that intoxication. Now, there are two different views regarding what sukara mean here. Sakran of alcohol or sakran of drowsiness. La taqrabu salata wa antum sukara. Hatta ta'lamu ma taqulun can actually apply to both of them until you know what you say. Because when a person is drowsy, Sometimes they really do not know what they are saying. And also someone who is intoxicated by alcohol may not know what they are saying. So two different views have been mentioned here. One is أَنَّ الْمُرَادَ بِهِ سَكْرُ الشَّرَابِ What is meant by it is intoxication of alcohol. And the other is when you are in uh, when you lose your mind when you are drowsy you are sleepy the literal meaning of sakr is to stop block the flow of water and here it is used uh, figuratively to block the flow of sound thinking and therefore sakran is someone whose sound thinking is blocked well, usually it is used for intoxication of alcohol or, or other intoxicating things, but it can be used for drowsiness, but it, it is used less in that case. Anyhow, those who believe that the, uh, the prohibition of drinking alcohol was gradually introduced to the Muslim society, to new Muslims, they believe that this is one step after the uh, the the ayah in Surah An Nahl, which says "Tatakhduna minhu sakaran warzqan hasana." From the grapes, you take sakar, though. The sakhar may mean sugar or it may mean intoxicating material, intoxicating drink. And therefore, that was the first step in 
in introducing the prohibition of alcohol, that this is not rizqan hasana, this is not uh, a goodly provision for from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is the second stage when uh, Allah is saying that at least when you want to pray, you should not be intoxicated. One question is raised here by Majmu al-Bayan, and that is, can you actually command or prohibit someone whose sound thinking is blocked? Sakran, those who are sukara. Well, you say, la taqrabu salat wa antum sukara, but they don't understand what you say, or they take it as a joke or something like that. So how this command is uh, directed towards the sukara, towards those who are intoxicated. Now, there are... Uh, different views here mentioned by the commentators. One say one one uh, interpretation is that of course it's not the case that someone who's intoxicated by alcohol cannot understand anything at all. So they can understand this. And some others say that it means that do not put yourself in a position that when you want you to pray you are sakran. So it is directed to a person with sound thinking, sound mind, so that they would not expose themselves to such a situation before Salat. Now Al-Jubba'i, the Mu'tazili commentator, says that it means that when you pray in this situation, of course this is before the the, the total prohibition of salat of sorry the total prohibition of alcohol when you are in such a situation if you have prayed in such a situation then you have to repeat it afterwards as i said this is all before the total uh prohibition of alcohol and if we say this is about uh, the gradual prohibition then this verse is abrogated by the uh, total prohibition which is mentioned in the verse من عمل الشيطان إنما الحمر والميسر والأنصاب والأظلام رجس من عمل الشيطان uh, There are a couple of things that we can actually uh, reflect upon by going through this sentence, لا تقربوا الصلاة وأنتم سكارا حتى تعلموا ما تقولون. The first is that the, in prayer, in worship, just repeating the the words, literally saying things, is of little worth, isn't it? It needs attention. حتى تعلموا ما تقولون. And and unless you know what you are saying. And many a time, even we are not sokara, neither of drowsiness, nor of alcohol, and we really don't know what you say. We, we put, just, we start the salat and we put it on autopilot and it goes for itself. Of course, it is accepted in the sense of fiqh, because in the sense of fiqh, that is something which you have performed your salat, but have we benefited from that? Have we understood hatta ta'alamu until you know what you are saying? So this is a very important reflection that we can have on this verse. And also, uh, uh, unconscious devotion or worship. Like, for example, we, we begin... Uh, uh, we begin reciting Surah Al-Hamd and then a Surah afterwards and then we go to Ruku and Sujood and say the Azkar. How do we really do not, are not conscious about what we are saying? Although, although the Taklif is done, but the worth of that uh, worship is very little. Anyhow, لا تقرب الصلاة وأنتم سكارا حتى تعلموا ما تقولون ولا جنبا إلا عابري سبيلا حتى تختصر جنب is someone who is in the state of 
ritual impurity because of sexual uh, intercourse. This is the meaning of junub. Wala junuban. So when you are junub, do not get close to salat or to a mosque, according to what we said previously. Salat here may mean the place of salat or may mean the salat itself. However, there is one sentence here or one expression here which is a, an evidence is a karina that salat is used as the place of salat because it says wala taqrabu as salat when you are junub illa abri sabil and unless if you are passing by and we know that this is the ruling of junub when a person is junub they cannot enter any mosque unless if they're just passing by there is there's no way other than passing through the mosque and going to the other side uh, to to go one's way in that case it is permissible wala junuban illa abri sabilan hatta tahtasadu iqtisal is different than than ghasl iqtisal is ghusl that is ritual purification which is of course washing in 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 certain uh, way which is commanded uh, instructed by sharia this is iqtisal until you unless you this have the ghusl now those who say uh, salat is not referring to place of salat but it refers to actual salat then they have uh, they should have a different interpretation interpretation than for abri sabilen except passing by wala junuban illa abri sabilen hatta takhtasalu they say abri sabilen means when you are traveling and therefore la taqrabu salat wa antum sukara and do not approach prayer, not the place of prayer, when you are junub, except if you are traveling. It means if you are traveling, uh, it is permissible for you to, to pray in the state of junub. Of course, with tayammum. However, this interpretation is not correct because the uh, the ruling about this is mentioned just in a couple of sentences later. So it cannot be a, if if we take this if we take Abri Sabilin as traveling, then there is a repetition in the verse. So what the sentence says and do not approach the mosques the place of prayer while you are junub except if you are passing through from one door you enter from one door and go out from the other door of course this does not apply to masjid al-haram in masjid al-haram even in this way you cannot enter masjid al-haram passing by while you are junub so uh وَلَا جُنُبًا إِلَّا عَابِرِ سَبِيلًا حَتَّى تَخْتَسَلْ This is the ruling for a person who is healthy, the ruling for a person who can, uh, can uh, perform their duties uh, as a healthy person. However, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ مَرْضَى أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ أو جاء أحد منكم من الغائط أو لامستم النساء فلم تجدوا ولم تجدوا ماء. If you are فلم تجدوا ماء. If you are sick or on a journey or any of you has come from the toilet or you have touched women and you cannot find water, then here. We have another ruling for you. We lighten the ruling of iqtisal or ghusl and we give you the concession to perform your prayer in a different way, to perform your worship 
in a different way. Now, one one thing which is uh, uh, interesting here or noticeable here is that when quantum marada or ala safan, if you are in an exceptional situation, or if there is possibility or probability of harm, this actually lightens the taklif of the person. Whether it is because of fear of harm or because we are in an exceptional situation when, where uh, the full, uh, full amenities are not available for us, the taklif is lightened but is not removed. That's very important. The taklif is not removed. It's replaced by something which is lighter, which is possible, but it is not removed. وَإِن كُنْتُمْ مَرْضَى أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرِ If you are sick or you are on a journey. أَوْ جَاءَ أَحَدٌ مِّنْكُمْ مِّنَ الْقَادِ This أَوْ, أو means or. However, sometimes it is used as واو. As a conjunction to conjoin the previous, the, the, the next sentence to the previous sentence. If we say au, it means that there is a sort of assortment here, either this or that. However, if we say wow, it means this one and that one. Now, au is sometimes used in the meaning of wow. وَأَرْسَلْنَاهُ إِلَىٰ مِئَةَ أَلْفٍ أَوْ يَزِيدُونَ Majority of commentators, or even almost all the commentators here say that أَوْ here means wow, means and. Or, أَوْ here doesn't mean or, it means and. Why? Because Allah cannot have hesitation in counting. So he says, and we sent him, he's talking about, uh, Yunus alayhi salam, we sent him to a community of 100,000 and more. It cannot be or more for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This hesitation is not something that we can allow in the statements of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here, because being sick or on journey is not something similar to coming from toilets. So, this aw means and, if you are ill, and you are on a journey, and you come from toilet or you have touched the women. Not or you have come to the from the toilet or have touched the women. The sentence wouldn't have any meaning in that case. So, if you are ill, or you come from a journey, and you have lost your ablution, Ghaid is a lowland or a hole. And usually because in very, very, very old days, before Islam, people didn't have toilets and they went to certain lowlands so that other people could not see them and relieve themselves. Ghaid has been used as a figure of a speech, as a a very polite way of saying that you have relieved yourself. In the same way as la mastumun nasa, if you have touched women, it means, of course, if you have sexual relation with them, but politely. The Quran always uses polite figuratives, polite allegories to, uh, to refer to such things. And this is one other thing that we can learn from this surah, this verse, and many other verses in the Quran, that uh, when we want to talk about things which are, which are root in the common culture, we better use a figure of a speech in a way that uh, we are not rude in that case. So, our lamastum, now lamastum is from lamps. And uh, lambs means touching. Those who take these uh, sentences not as figure of a speech, but they take it literally, 
Because Lamastun Nisa is a reference to Jaba'ah, to having sexual relation. But they say no, it means touching the women, and therefore touching women, and therefore they say even if you touch a woman, you have to make ablution uh, for Salat. This is the view of Shafi, of course, that if, you, if, if uh, someone has an ablution and they touch women, they touch their wives, for example, they have to repeat the ablution. However, majority of commentators, and in our fiqh as well, la mastumun nisa is a polite uh, figure of a speech to refer to uh, sexual intercourse. So, and if you are ill and or traveling and au here means and and you have come from toilet or you have touched women in which you need the ghusl uh, then fatayammamu sa'idan tayyiba fatayammamu sa'idan tayammum means to seek to find to intend towards something. So, tayammamu sa'idan tayyiba means seek a, 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 a pure, clean surface. Sa'id means surface of the earth. This is the literal meaning of sa'id with sa'id. Sa'idan tayyiba, some place on the earth that is pure, it's not najas. When you find, and that means uh, soil, stone, anything on the, which belongs to the surface of the earth. And, فَتَيَمَّمُوا سَعِيدًا طَيِّبًا Now, some people say that Said is a high land. However, Zajjaj says, as Zajjaj, who is a very uh, reputable uh, Lexicographers say that لا أعلم خلافا بين أهل اللغة في أن السعيد وجه الأرض. I do not know any uh, disagreement among lexicographers that سعيد means surface of the earth. And then uh, Tabrizi says that this meaning يوافق مذهب أصحابنا. This is conf in conform. It, 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 this is conformant with the uh, with the uh, ruling of our scholars that tayammum is permissible on stone as it's permissible on soil. And tayyib here may mean two things. Sa'id and tayyiba. Tayyib may mean pure, not najas, or halal not something which is usurped. Tayammum in that is not, in, in that case is not uh, acceptable. It may mean both certainly. I mean it should be halalan wa tahiran. Both of them are conditions. Inna Allah kana fatwa tayammumu sa'idan tayyiba wamsahu bi wujuhikum wa aydikum famsahu bi wujuhikum men wipe your faces and your hands with it. Of course, not all the face. I mean, from from the the the, the, the top of forehead until the chin. No, it's just part of the face, as is part of the hand. And the commentators and the the the, the jurists have differed, uh, disagreed in what is meant by hand. Is it just from the wrist? to the tip of fingers, from elbow to the tip of fingers, from armpit, shoulder to the tip of fingers. So we have to have an interpretation here. What is hand? Usually hand is that part which is from the wrist to the uh, tip of the fingers. And this is what is actually mentioned in our, uh, in our fiqh, that you have to touch, wipe from the the wrist to the tip of the finger. Famsahu bi wujuhikum. 
وَأَيْدِيكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Why in Allah kana afuwan ghafura? Why afuwan ghafura is mentioned here? It means that uh, these lightnings of the ahkam is because of his forgiveness, forgiveness, because of his mercy, because of his maghfirah, because he wants to yuridu Allahu bikum al yusra, wa la yuridu bikum al usr. He what he wants, when he, what he intends in all these rulings is not to put you in, uh, in hardship, to put you in trouble. You want, he wants you to take benefit of such things. And if you are in a situation that you cannot take benefit of that, he lightens it, but he gives the full benefit to you. This is the meaning of in Allah kanafuwan. Afura, he is all excusing, all forgiving. Now, verse number 44 returns back to the uh, context of the previous verses. As we said last week, this uh, verse is just like an interjection between, uh, in between the verses which talk about the, uh, the enemies of the Muslims, especially those Jews in Medina who were conspiring against Muslims. Now, verse number 44. Alam tara ila alladhina utu nasiban min al-kitab yashtaroon al-dhalalah wa yuridun an tadhillu al-sabil Have you not regarded those who were given a share of the book who purchased error and desire that you too should be should lose the way yuriduna and tadhillu sabil now a couple of things here one alam tara ila alladhina utu nasiban min alkitab they were given a share of the book now we know that ahlul kitab initially were given a full share of the book wa atayna musa alkitab وَجَعَلْنَاهُ هُدًا لِبَنِي إِسْرَائِلِ We gave Moses the book, not a share of the book. And we made it a guidance for Banu Israel. Or, وَأَوْرَثْنَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ الْكِتَابِ We gave the Banu Israel to inherit the book. Of course, these are the Osiya of Musa a.s. But why? Here it says a share of the book because it may be for two things. One, because they had an understanding of the book, not the full understanding of the book. If they had full understanding of the book, then they would have believed in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It was a share of the book. Or it may mean this book has not reached them intact. It has been uh, some of it has been taken away. Some some parts have been uh, increased. It has been added to it, and therefore, it's just a share of the book. So they don't have the full guidance. Don't feel. Don't think that Ahlul Kitab, the people of the book, has a full share of the book. Has full guidance from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. What they have now is a partial share of the book that which was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alam tara ila alladhina utu nasiban min al-kitab yashtaroon al-dhalalah They purchase the uh, error. They purchase error. Yashtaroon al-dhalalah And this may mean that by this share of the book they interpret it in a way that they buy misguidance and error instead of guidance. Or according to Abu Ali al-Jubba'i, he says that uh, many of the uh, wealthy people in the Jewish community at the time, they gave lots of money to the scholars so that they insert or add or wrongly interpret what was in the book to add something to the book 
or interpret wrongly what was in the book. So they give the money, they give money and they buy zalala, misguidance. Alam tara ila ladina utu naseeban mil kitab, yashtaruna zalala. It's just like a actual purchase. I give you money, you change the interpretation of this, this verse, or you insert something in the book, or you delete something from it, and then uh, in that case I have given the money, I have given money to purchase zalala and error, misguidance. Yashtaruna zalala. Why they do this? First of all, they themselves are misguided and also yuriduna and tazilnu sabil. They want you to lose way in the same way that they have lost the way. And that may refer to a misinterpretation of the verses which was revealed about the description of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and was actually there, did exist in the Torah of that time, and everyone could understand from it what the Qur'an says. And as the Qur'an says, الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابِ يَعْرِفُونَهُ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ They know him. Just the way they know their sons. So the descriptions were very clear. So they were either, re either removed or given wrong interpretation. Yuriduna yashtaruna dhalala wa yuriduna an sabil. And they want you to also lose the way. And we learn something from this again. One one very important point to, to notice here is that sometimes the collusion and corroboration of those with wealth, the wealthy, with the scholars may actually create great error in religion. Inshallah Allah would save us from that. ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين